around here and getting, you know, this and getting a girlfriend and that and this, and just so I can feel better. And somehow time passed and I felt that I'm healing finally. Success came back. I could go back to school. I felt better. I was doing good in school, getting scholarships. Um, I was making it you know, to the all-star soccer team. Um, I was doing martial arts and my name was in the paper, my picture. So I became all popular in high school. And people were you know, praising me. I had a convertible car in grade 12. And people were like, oh man, this guy's got it all. And I remember very well coming from, you know, it's a birthday party song, driving drunk, crossing red lights, stop lights, you know, and, and fast, 120, 140 on just normal streets. And time that I reached home safe and went to sleep. And remember laying in that bed at night, the same recurring thoughts and looking, staring at that empty wall and just saying, like, is this it? Is this it, man? Now, finally, I've got what I've been looking for back in the days before I left Romania, looking for it towards Canada. And now it seems like I got all the popularity, I got the girlfriend, I got the car, I got, you know, everything. And I'm sitting there and like, is this it? Is this it? You know, I'm not going to do alcohol and drugs because, I don't know, I just couldn't. I was always into sports and I could never do that. That was like off my list. Even when my brother was like literally climbing on my shoulders and trying to stick weed in my mouth and smoke it, smoke it. And I'm like, no, nah, no. Nah. And I was sitting and staring at the wall and saying, what, what else? What else? Well, the answer was nothing. Because nothing can satisfy the soul. Nothing. And it was that night I went to sleep and as part of psychology this is called a, a vivid dream. It's like you can't tell the reality from the dream. And that's the dream. As I said, I walked into a house, it was dark, this girl came to me and stabbed me. Now you'd say, where is Islam coming into this? And I try to separate the the two a little bit so you can understand the jahiliya part. You can understand the struggle. Where does the faith come in this? See, in this time in parallel, I was looking for answers. I believed in God. So what's the first thing I did when I was depressed, when I was in question, you know, questioning something? I said, I'm going to go back to my Bible and study it. So I studied my Bible. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say that I didn't find nothing in it. I found something in it. I found some instances of guidance. Because even as Muslims, we believe that the Bible was not in its original form right now, of course, but it was a book delivered from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, revealed from Allah. Now the history and everything like that, it's a whole different story right now. The second thing that I found now was that this is not the Word of God anymore. Because by reading it, you can just tell. And it was the first time that I read it while looking for something, searching for answers. Not just like, I got to read it as a, you know. I think we studied the Bible since grade one. In school, mandatory. Not like, you know, people go to church. and For us, it was mandatory in school. Mandatory. Four years, mandatory. And even after that, we were, by, our parents opted it. And even to grade eight, from grade one to grade eight, eight years of Bible studies in school. But that time was the first time that I actually opened it, seeking some answers. And I found some answers. And one of them was that this is not the Word of God. It can't be. At the same time, I was looking at other things. Studying philosophy, Hinduism, Buddhism, different kind. And I remember our philosophy teacher teaching us, you know, these religions. But when he came to Islam, he kind of spent literally five minutes on it. He's like, well, you know, my Muslim neighbors play this Muslim music all the time. And he's like, blah, 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 and, and that's it. And I was like, what's going on? Why is he not giving justice to Islam? So, of course, my friend was with me. 
So we start slowly talking. Slowly he was changing. And I remember he went for like a, for, for some retreat or whatever. And then he came back and he was all changed. And I remember I go and I'm like, hey man, what's up? You know? And he's like, no man. He's like, I'm not doing that anymore, man. I'm like, come on, man. You know why you let me hang in, you know? He's like, no. And I remember he, like, he took out like, his Dr. Dre CDs and like, his Tupac CDs and like, burned them and stuff like that, his PlayStation games. I'm like, I'm like, dude, you become extremist, right? Like, what's wrong with you? And then for a while, he like, pulled away from me. And I didn't understand why. This guy is like, you know. But I remember when he told me that one day he's going to change. And I felt saddened. And of course, I said, you know what? I'm going to try my best to bring him back. <laughs> like, I'll give him that Like, party that and I remember like, we were like double riding on a bike because we had, subhanAllah, look at this, Allah, yani, we had an assignment that we had to do together for English. The teacher put us. And we had to go and watch this movie and put a, some write a report on it, on some kind of, you know, summary. And I remember he's like, give me a, a ride on, my, on a bike, you know, like I'm sitting on like the handle and he's riding. We're talking and I'm like, I'm like, come on, man. I'm like, why are you letting me? Like, why are you not, you know, being my friend anymore? And he's like, you know, I changed, man. I, I told you, right? And I said, how about we make a deal? I said, you tell me more about Islam, okay, because I like it, and I, you know, and I love the way you pray. I, I told him, like, just the sujood, as, I, you know, as the brother was saying. Allahi, the sujood was something that just marveled me. And I was kind of like, looking on it, and I was so attracted to it. And I said, let's make the deal. You teach me about Islam more, and I'll help you get a girlfriend or something like that. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. Like, I was just saying something real, real, just trying to. And he's like, I'll teach you about Islam, though. So I said, OK. So I learned about Islam. He started giving me books. I used to take books from the library at school and hide them under my pillow at night. Because I didn't want my parents. I felt embarrassed, actually. Because I, I kept hidden from my parents anything. They had this image of me as, you know, this very successful student and blah, blah, all these. And I, I felt very shy and ashamed to actually, for them to see me reading books about Islam. And I remember I used to take it at night and read it and put it under the bed and under the pillow and sleep. And I used to spend a lot of time in the lunchtime in the library reading about it. And going back to, to the dream again, I'm going to keep coming back to the dream. When I had that dream, that dream was a spark. That dream was a spark. Because I thought that, okay, now I know that the Bible is not the Word of God. So I left Christianity. I didn't become Muslim. I left Christianity. I remember very well the day my mom came and this, you know, just, this memory came to me not too long ago. My mom reminded me actually of it. She's like, do you remember when I came to your room? Like I had crucifixes and pictures of you know, Jesus and Mary and all these things. And she came into my room one day. She's like, where are they? I said, spring cleaning, mom. <laughs> and literally what I did, and I'm not trying, if there's any Christians here, not to insult, you know? Like, you know, in Saladin, when he entered Jerusalem, he, he actually you know, protected the you know, things of the, the churches and all that. But I literally took them and ripped them and burned them and threw the cross in the river. I used to like, wear a big cross in my neck. And for me, it was like the cleansing of idols. Now, I didn't become a symbol. Because as the Bible was saying, there's, there's an ego issue. There's something there that's stopping you yet. Even though the first glimpse of light was already there, I was being attracted to Islam. All these pieces were coming together. I felt attracted to it. I felt that I need to know more. It felt very exotic even. But then something put the cap on it. And I remember very well going with the brother, same with the brother. Again, talking. And subhanAllah, and think about this. Allah plans it to such a thing. How can this happen now only? And he has, he's like, I got a question for you. We're driving, going to soccer game. He's like, I got a question for you. Because we're talking about, you know, religion and all this. He's like, how do Christians believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Like, what, what does that mean? That's why he said, what does that mean, son of God? I thought about it, I was like, man, yeah, what does that mean? 
And you were like son, son of God? And I was like, you automatically, even though, if you look at the theology of Christianity, of, of what the, the books dictate, what the Bible says, there's a special connotation to the word begotten. Now again, I'm very, very versed, in, but I'm not going to try to make it about these things. But the simple question that he asked, and the simple response that I said, I said, no, it's not like he's the son of God. I said, he's created by God. That was like the, 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 the answer that came from inside of me. <coughs> and he kind of left it at that, left it at that, but that stuck with me. And so at that time, I was, you know, the first time actually that I'm thinking about these things. And I remember going and just searching on the net about different religions. Again, I was just looking, you know. And coming upon the first commandment, I am your Lord, thy God. You know, you should not have no other gods besides me on earth, on heaven, or in between. Jealous. And I'm like, what? We used to memorize these things. But I never connected it. I say, Christians don't believe in this. I challenge anyone. They don't believe in this. They don't believe in the first command. I'm sorry if there's any Christians here. I'm not trying to, but they don't believe in this. So I went, I was going at the time at a Catholic high school. I was frequenting a Catholic high school. And I went and a priest came and I even, I argued. I was very rude because I didn't know better. And the priest was a nice guy, an old guy. And I challenged him. And I said, what do you, know? what do you have to say about this? And the priest is kind of nice and, you know, the Catholic priest are kind of like, ah. Then I went to my teacher, and she had more to say. And I said, come on, how do you guys believe in this? They look what the Bible says. She's like, yeah, it's not the same, but we just have to believe. You just have to follow it. And I said, well, I can't do that. I can't do that. And this is a time when I kind of made my own faith. I remember the brother used to fast Ramadan. It was like, it was so funny because we would drive the car and we have like this big system and playing music and then like it was like fasting time you know so like okay that time we couldn't play music and then like it was iftar time you know we're like okay now we can play music and I started fasting too only till 12 o'clock though till like noon you know <laughs> and when I could eat like even till 12 I could eat like fruits that was in my own fasting you know? but there was something from me longing to do what he's doing. I started praying. I said, I'm going to start praying. And who am I going to pray? I prayed to who I always wanted to pray to. To God. But I made sujood now. So I started making sujood. And it felt so amazing. But I remember though, because we studied this, in the Bible, Jesus used to make sujood. Isn't it? In the garden gets a man, when he prays to God, he makes sujood. And the prophets used to make so true. Dawood David, and Solomon, and Abraham says he fell on his face and prayed to God. So I remember that very well. So I started making my own thing. But then again, I had to go back to that dream. And you know what that dream to me when I woke up? I was crying tears and sweating and I thought that something wrong happened you know like I'm actually dying my soul is lifting up towards the sky towards the light and I walked around I looked at my mom she's okay that says my brother and all that and I said something's up I know this this was a sign for me to say like listen you can't make up your religion man. you need to find the truth and the truth is it was right in front of me the heart was already attached to it the Tawheed, the oneness of God, as the brothers were saying, I'm not going to repeat the same thing, but the excellence, the perfection of how God is described, it fits like a glove. It's perfect to the fitrah of human beings. Nothing else makes sense. People say, well, God's not supposed to make sense. Then why are you worshiping? A senses thing? Come on. How can we use our senses for everything, except when it comes to faith? People are rocket scientists, for God's sake, applying principles of physics. And when they come home after 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock, whenever they come back, that's switched off, it's off, turn off. 
And then we associate partners with